Hey, it's Shauna Meyerson with Yoga Athletica in Los Angeles, California, here today to teach you Mayurasana, Peacock Pose. In order to learn the pose, it's good to sort of figure out the arm positioning from standing up. It's a little harder to see once I face down. So imagining there were a floor that is vertical in this scenario and clear. The classic arm position for this pose is elbows together, wrists together, hands like this. Your elbows essentially digging into your ribs slash upper core. Great. If you're a guy. This is one of those poses that proves unequivocally that this is a practice created by men for bed. Because if you're a lady, this just does not feel so hot. In fact, it can be quite painful to press your arms quite directly into your breasts. So unless you're into that sort of thing, ladies, this pose has a get out of jail free card built in. Because our workaround is, imagine you're creating an elbow push-up bra, your elbows come in and then they dig into your ribs. Our hands will be as wide as our elbows. Okay, so even though I could get my hands together, I don't want my hands more narrow than my elbows. Right straight lines will always be my safest lines. So, who's going to have an easier time at this? Men or women? Well, women. Because a wider base is a more stable base. Right? Okay, men, before you get all whiny and sad, don't worry about it. You could try it with the wider elbows, and I think it's a great way to learn. Whether you have man boobs or not, just go wider. But remember this, guys and girls. The elbows are not to the sides of your body like a chaturanga. They're actually underneath your body with the elbow supporting your torso. Okay, let's try that arm position from the floor. Start on your hands and your knees, and your knees should be no further forward than the line of your hips. They can be further backwards if you want to. In fact, when we move into the pose, it will help if they're a little further back. <clears throat> With the pressure on my right hand, I pull my elbow so that the arm sort of hugs the side of my chest, and I turn my hand backwards, and then I do the same here. Okay? See how my knees just move back? Can you come and bend your elbows 90 degrees? And then straighten your legs as well. Okay? Just to get a feel for this arm position. It's a huge stretch for the inner form, which is good. We don't stretch it out very often. Okay, so once we have the arm position, balancing is fun. Now, I'm not going to say that this is an easy balance. It's not. But it is a simple one to understand. If you've ever been to a playground that has a seesaw, a teeter-totter, right? Where like one kid's on one side and one kid's on the other side. It's the same concept here. My arms represent the fulcrum, that middle balancey part. And my legs represent one kid. My torso represents the other kid. Ideally, the kids are even in weight. Right? Because right now, look at my back kid, meaning the weight that's behind me. He's heavy. Right? I've got the heaviest parts of my body, literally, from my low ribs, meaning my, all of my core, my hips, my thighs, my legs, everything behind me. Well, that's going to be hard to balance unless my upper body moves way forward to compensate, right? Okay, let's start with a little bit of a modification. In all of your balance poses, you're gonna have a plane of symmetry, right? So if I'm here, the line from my wrist to my elbow, if it went straight through my body, is my plane of symmetry. And I need to equalize the weight that's in front and in back, but with all of my balance poses, the closer my body weight is to the plane of symmetry, the easier it's going to be to balance. How do I get this big bulky back part closer to my plane of symmetry? Well, I bend my knees. Now, this is one of those poses in yoga that's actually easier to do in Padmasana in your full lotus pose than it is in any other position. However, 
since I tore my meniscus, there's no Padmasana in my life right now. So I'll work with Baddha Konasana instead. If at this point you want to wrap up your legs into your full Padmasana, you'll find it makes this magically delicious. Okay, so I'm on my knees, and I'm going to want my knees a little bit back, take my arms into place, and to start this one out, I'll put my chin right on the floor because I know I've got too much weight in back. So let's just sort of um, hedge our bets, okay, by putting my chin way down and then bending my knees in, okay? Whether it's a lotus or a baddha kanasana, you see how my legs come way closer to the midline, and so balancing, well, sort of balancing, it's a chin balance, um, is not so much of an issue, okay? Once you have that, how do you get your chin off the floor? Well, we've had other postures, other videos that I've made that talk about how to get my head off the floor into an arm balance. And if you can recall any of them, because I know you've watched all of them, right? You know that it's not a process of lifting up, but rather moving forward in space. Because what happens if I lift up? I push my body weight backwards. Let me demonstrate. So if I come in, put my chin down, bend my knees in, and just pop up, my legs just fall straight down. The real work of this pose is moving forward, forward, forward in space. Now I know that's scary because forward seems to lend itself very nicely to face plants. I'm not going to lie. It does, but you're not going to land very hard. You're falling like this far. So in the beginning, there will be a little like chinniness on the floor. You'll be okay, I promise. Well, I don't promise, but I suspect. So taking your hands in, make sure your elbows are fully in your ribs. Start with your chin down, bend in, whether in Baddha Kanasana or in Padmasana. And then when you lift up, think about your head going forward. So I'm sort of pressing my hands into the heel of my palm forward towards the front of my mat to balance things out. Now that's something I can only explain to you and that you may not be able to see, but energetically, I'm pushing this way to balance out all of this. Okay. Let's try, same thing no chin. So I know that I have to go way forward. If you want to, you could bend one leg at a time and just lift one leg up and then the other leg, but go forward, forward, forward. Keep looking forward. Don't drop your head because you're going to fall on your hat. Look forward. You could bend one knee and then bend your other knee and pull it in. Okay? If you prefer, just like a tadpole, pull in both. Okay? Yes, folks, that's how a tadpole does a peacock pose. If you feel like you're falling forward, you need to lift up more. Make sure your gaze is to the wall and not to the floor. If you can't get your legs off the floor at all, that means your body weight is too far backwards, okay? Again, just think of the seesaw. Where's the heavy kid? Okay? You gotta lighten that puppy uppy. Okay, great. Let's try it with straight legs. Same thing. So I'll start with my chin on the floor because it's a lot more accessible. I roll my elbows into my ribs. By the way, look how far back my knees are now. Right, because if I'm here, as soon as I start to lean forward, I'm just gonna fall right on my face. So I have your knees way back in space here. And then I creep forward a little, lift one foot, see if I can find balance as I lift my other foot. Now, the key word here is lift, not jump. If you're hopping your foot up and down, that's not going to find you balance, okay? You know what I say about that? That's just jumping in the air and calling it flying. If you want to 
hold a pose. You can't just pop your legs in and out of it like a little Mexican jumping bean. You gotta find that place of absolute balance where the feet will naturally find their flow. Okay, in a way, two feet will be a little easier than one foot. Why? Because when I have one foot on the floor, it does provide me some stability, a lot of stability, but it's also holding me down, which makes it a lot more to compensate for to get it up, so to speak. Okay, so this time, <clears throat> hands come in, legs come up, I creep forward a little with my toes, lean forward, 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 and watch how my feet just lift themselves right off the floor. So there was no force, no active lifting, lifting, <laughs> lifting at all, but instead, all I did was weigh the kid on this end of the teeter-totter and even it out with the kid on this end of the teeter-totter. More than anything, this is just a patience play. You gotta learn to move slowly, mindfully, and incrementally to find your absolute balance. Let's try one more time. So again, elbows come in, hands are facing forward. Your elbows support your ribs or your core, depending on how low. Walk in a little bit and see if you can lean forward until you find that flow. You can lift your legs, you can keep them low. Legs together will be more challenging than legs apart. Hey, there's a lot to work with on this pose. It's a fun one. It's a simple one, but it's not an easy one. Practice up, peacocks, and I'll see you next time. This is Shauna Meyerson with Yoga Athletica in Los Angeles, California. Have an awesome day.